Welcome to finding the zeros of a function and also determine multiplicity. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to find the zeros of a function and then also determine the multiplicity. Now, before we get started, we need to remember what exactly are the zeros of a function. So what I did was I constructed a linear function, f of x equals x plus 2. And for that function, you can see that it crosses the x-axis at 0. So therefore, I can say that f of x is equal to 0 at this point, right? The output value, if you say like, you know, Here's my x-axis. Here would be my f of x-axis. The output equals 0 at this point. Therefore, we call that the zeros, where the graph crosses the x-axis is what we call the zeros because your output, your f of x, is equal to 0. So if I wanted to find, well, what exactly for this function, f of x equals x plus 2, how do I find exactly what the zeros are? Well, you can just plug a 0 in for f of x and then solve for x. So once I solve for x here, I get x equals a negative 2. Now, it's pretty simple for a linear equation. And today, the work that we're going to be doing is a little bit more difficult. But through a couple techniques that I'll show you and remind you of, it's really going to be the exact same process. Now, the one thing I do need to talk to you about is multiplicity. You see that this graph crosses once. You also see that this graph over here crosses three different times. But here, the graph never crosses, but actually touches it. And that comes up at an important point when we're talking about multiplicity. When you have a graph that crosses at certain points, we say it has an odd multiplicity. And when you have a graph that touches your x-axis but does not cross, we say it has an even multiplicity. So how are we going to determine when it's odd or when it's even? Well, when we're going to do our factoring, we're going to get to a certain set of factors. Now, and our factors are going to be like you know, x minus a number raised to a power. And if <clears throat> my power is odd, then we say it has an odd multiplicity. If my power is even, we say it has an even multiplicity. And remember, it's very important. When it's even multiplicity, it's going to touch the graph but not cross. And when it has an odd multiplicity, it's going to cross it. So let's take a look at our first example and see if we can determine the multiplicity of the problem and then also the zeros. So right now I have a quadratic function. I have f of x equals 2x squared plus 11x minus 21. So first thing I want to do is just set e 0 equal for f of x. OK, so now that I set 0 equal for 2x squared plus 11x minus 21, now the next thing I need to do is I need to find my values of x. Well, this one was pretty easy because you had 1x, right? And you just solve for it. Here, we have an x squared and an x. So one of the technique I'm going to have to use is a factoring technique. Now, I could use a quadratic formula. I could use completing the square. For this one, I'm going to try using um, a diamond method to work on my factoring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply my a times my c of a quadratic equation. a times c is going to give me a negative 42. And then I'm going to write my b on the block on the bottom. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what two numbers multiply to give me 42, negative 42, but add to give me 11. Then I'll do a little think in my head, and I'll get negative 14 and a positive 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite those in for my equation. So I'll have 0 equals 2x squared. And then instead of 11x, I'm going to write a negative 14x plus 3x minus 21. And what you'll notice when I did this factoring, I didn't change the problem because a negative 14x plus 3x still gives me 11x. But you'll see what this did was now this allows us to factor this further. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. Now, out of my first two terms, I can factor out a 2x. And I'm left with x minus 7. And here, I can factor out a 3, and I'm left with an x minus 7. Therefore, now, what you notice is now I can factor out an x minus 7. So I have 0 equals x minus 7 oops, times 2x plus 3, my remaining numbers left over. So then, if when I'm going to factor this, I can now say, if you look at this, so here, these are my two factors. Do my two factors have a multiplicity, have any number raised to the second power? No. So these are both going to be odd multiplicities. And to finish solving them, I set them both equal to 0. So I say 0 equals x minus 7, and 0 equals 2x plus 3. Therefore, by solving, my zeros are now x 
equals 7 when I solve for x, and uh, negative 3 halves. All right? So let's look at this uh, next problem. For the next problem, we already know these are actually already in factored form. So I can tell right now, since this is a factor raised to the even exponent, this is going to have a multiplicity of 2, or an even multiplicity. And this is going to be a multiplicity of um, uh, odd. So again, I'll just set my f of x equals 0. So I'll say x times x plus 3 squared. Well, since these are both two factors, I can set them both equal to 0. Say 0 equals x and x plus 3 squared equals 0. Remember, this is going to be an even multiplicity. So here, I have x equals 0 is 1, 0. And then here, I'll take the root of both sides. Now, x plus 3 equals 0 minus 3. So I'll say my zeros are x equals 0 and x equals a negative 3 with an even multiplicity. So what that will tell me is when I'm graphing this, my graph is not going to cross a negative 3, but rather it's going to touch and then rebound. Uh, for this problem, again, I can see this is an x squared, but before I start assuming, oh, even multiplicity, let's make sure we can set this as two factors multiplied by each other. So I'm going to make my f of x equals 0, and I'm going to say x squared minus 3x. Now again, like I said, it's very tempting for students to want to say, oh, this is even multiplicity. We don't have it factored yet. What I can do is I can factor out an x, and therefore I have x minus 3. And then what you guys will notice is now since I have this as two factors, I notice that these are both going to be odd multiplicity. So solving them both for 0, I have x minus 3 equals 0, and x equals 0. Therefore, my zeros are going to be x equals 0 and 3. Now, I want you to solve for x. Um, <clears throat> yeah, right. So let's move on to the next one. All right, the next one, everybody's saying, oh, God, x to the fourth. Whoa, this is going to get difficult. Well, let's just go ahead and forget about what it's looking at, and let's just set it equal to 0, because that's what we've done the whole time, right? Set it equal to 0, and then let's see what we can factor out. So I set this equal to 0, and I get x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 2x squared. Now, what is something that they all share? Well, they all share an x squared, right? So let's factor out the x squared. Therefore, now I factor out the x squared, I'm left with x squared minus x minus 2. All right, so now I have to set this two factors. Now, since this is a factor, we know that this is going to be an even multiplicity. There's a difference. Here, this wasn't set as a factor, right? But now, when it is a factor, we can set it now. We know this is an even multiplicity. I still need to see if I can factor this further. And again, you can just do your diamond method if you want. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, negative 1. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 2 but add to give you negative 1? Well, that's going to be a, a negative 2 and a positive 1. So this gives you x squared times x minus 2 times x plus 1. Then I can set all these factors equal to 0. So I can say my zeros are x equals 0, which is an even multiplicity. And then also x equals 2 and negative 1. Okay, that's when I just set those equal to 0 and solve. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, well, I just went through four different problems. What I want to do is I want to give you four problems. I want you to try them on your own, and then I'm going to come back and show you the answers and see how you did.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please write down these problems, and then what I'm going to do is uh, I'll give you about 15 minutes, then I'll come back and show you the answers. All right, you guys ready? Let's jump into it. So remember, the first thing we always want to do is set our f of x equal to 0. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to say 0 equals a negative 12x cubed plus 20x squared. Then the next thing we want to do is always factor out what we can, what both, all of our terms share. So here, we can, these are both even numbers. So I can say that, well, I can both factor out a negative 4 and an x squared. That's my highest degree. So what I have is 0 equals a negative. I'm sorry, I said I could factor out a 4, right? So let's factor out a negative 4. Why not? A negative 4x squared. When I factor out a negative 4x squared, that's going to leave me with a 3x. Um, 3x plus 5. No, 3x minus 5. Sorry. Okay, so now what you notice is, remember, now we have two factors that are multiplied by each other, giving us 0. Therefore, we have our two factors. We need to look at the exponents of our two factors to determine if they're even or odd. Well, here there's no exponent, so we can say it has a 1, which would make it odd. So here I'm going to have an odd multiplicity. Here, this negative 4x squared is going to have an even multiplicity. So I'm going to set both my factors equal to 0. And then I'll solve. So I'll have my zeros. When you, uh, I'll just show you real quick. Divide by negative 4. 0 equals x squared. Take the root. So I'm going to have x equals 0, which is an even multiplicity. And then I'll add 5. And x will equal 5 thirds, which will be an odd multiplicity. Okay? Uh, moving on to the next problem. Whew. Usually we'd want to factor out an x squared, right? It'd be very helpful for us to do that. But we can't uh, because our 10 doesn't have an x or an x squared or an x um, to the fourth. However, I can factor out a 5, so let's do that first. Let's set this equal to 0, and let's factor out a 5. So therefore, I'm left with x squared plus 3x, I'm sorry, that's x to the fourth, 3x squared plus 10. Now, what I notice is, though, if I can rewrite these, these are kind of the same thing as x squared and x, right? If you, could, if you were just to say that, you know, um, x squared now equals x, well then, x to the fourth would then just equal x squared. So I'm just going to really treat these as like an x squared and an x and not really get confused by it. But now I need to determine what two numbers multiply to give me 10, but then add to give me, um, oh, sorry, I forgot to multiply that out. No wonder I was, was when you factor out a 5, right, you're going to get a 2. I was like, that's not going to work, but now it makes sense. So now what I can determine is I'm going to have 0 equals 5 times x squared uh, let's see, plus 2, and then x squared plus 1. And what you'll notice is, when you multiply these, x squared times x squared gives you x to the fourth. When you do your middle terms, you're going to have an x squared, and then 2 times 1 gives you 2. So, however, we look at this. Now, here's our three factors. Notice, though, on all three of our factors, they all have an odd, or these two have an odd multiplicity. I understand that the x squareds are even. But it's not asking about the x squared. We're not looking for the degree of x. We're looking for the degree of our factor, which are both going to be odd. So these are both going to be odd multiplicities. We don't care about our factor 5, so we're going to set both of our factors equal to 0. Okay? And then our zeros is we're going to have some odd zeros. So our zeros are going to be odd multiplicity. But when you subtract, you're going to have to take this root of a negative number. So we'll have x squared equals negative 2, and x squared equals negative 1. So x is going to equal plus or minus the square root of negative 2, and plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Now, we'll get into how we're going to find you know, those imaginary roots, but for right now, we'll just leave it at that. Um, for this one, I notice I can factor out an x. So let's set our f of x equal to 0, and let's factor out an x. Now, what I can do is see if I can factor this. And I say, well, what two numbers multiply to give me 4, but then add to give me negative 2? So you could say 0 equals x times 
times x uh, minus 2 times x minus 2, right? Now, it's very important for us to understand that x minus 2 times x minus 2 is the same thing as x minus 2 squared, right? So we could write this as 0 equals x times x minus 2 squared. And the reason why that's so important is because what you'll notice is now the multiplicity of this problem is now going to be even. So now we have a multiplicity that's even, and then we have an odd multiplicity. So when I find the zeros, I say 0 equals x and x minus 2 equals 0. And what you'll notice, oh, x minus 2, sorry, squared equals 0. So therefore, my zeros are now going to be x equals 0, which is odd, and x equals positive 2, which is going to be even. OK, lastly, we need to uh, factor this one. Now, this is a difference of two squares. f of x equals 0 equals x squared minus 25. Um, when doing the difference of two squares, one thing you guys should notice that Whenever you have an x squared minus a y squared, what the difference of two squares tells you is you can write x minus y times x plus y. All right? So my difference of two squares tells me I can do 0, well, not y, sorry. Um, yeah, well, what is, if y squared is 25, what would be my y, which is 5? So therefore, I can write x plus 5 times x minus 5. Now, since these are not exactly the same, I can't, I can't say it's x plus 5 squared or x minus 5 squared. So therefore, I'm just going to say x equals, I'm sorry, 0 equals x plus 5 and 0 equals x minus 5. Therefore, x equals negative 5 and x equals a positive 5. All right? And there you go. That is finding the zeros of a function.